What should I look for in a facelift surgeon? It can be confusing and overwhelming for anyone considering a facelift as to what procedure is right for them. Assuming you already have an understanding that you need facelift surgery and you find yourself being confused by the different branded procedures and the claims such as, I only perform deep plane facelifts, I'll share with you what I feel is important in looking for a facelift surgeon. I'm Dr. Amiya Prasad. I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice in Manhattan and Long Island for over 20 years. I've been performing facelifts and neck lifts throughout my career and even during my fellowship experience I was already thinking of how to make facelift surgery and recovery better without sacrificing results. I perform all types of facelifts from short scar facelift, deep plane facelift, face and neck lifts, and even non-surgical facial filler treatment called the Y-Lift, which for people who have had bone volume loss and are not candidates for facelift surgery is an ideal solution. In my opinion, when searching for a facelift surgeon, the first thing you should look for is a doctor who spends time listening to what you want and closely examines your face and neck. I feel that a doctor who takes their time with you is more likely to plan and customize the procedure according to your facial aging issues. I feel that facelift doctors who rush through consultations are often associated with so-called miracle facelifts or are just too busy to do their best work for every patient. I believe it's critical for anyone considering a facelift to get a clear sense of a doctor's aesthetic style. Some doctors and their patients consider a stereotypical plastic look to be ideal. My personal aesthetic style for facelifts and other cosmetic procedures I perform is a more natural looking aesthetic. I believe in both preserving the natural facial character of my patients such that any enhancement results in a younger looking and more refreshed version of themselves. It's important that your personal aesthetic is a good fit with the aesthetic style of your prospective doctor. A way to do this is to look at examples of their before and after photos as well as your impression during consultation as what they describe is what they would do for you. Experience with expertise in facelift surgery is very important. In an effort to promote experience and expertise, it's common for surgeons to drop names like deep plane facelifts or max lifts to create the impression that only they do these procedures. The fact is that all experienced and reputable facelift surgeons perform many different facelift techniques. I explained during consultation that what is planned during surgery is continuously adjusted based on anatomy revealed during surgery. One factor that separates facelift surgeons from one another is the expected recovery time and type of anesthesia used. Many facelift surgeons only perform facelifts using general anesthesia. During my training, facelift surgery was always performed under general anesthesia at the time, I looked at the processes involved and began working on ways to make facelift surgery a safer and more convenient procedure. After my training was completed, I started doing facelifts in virtually all my cosmetic procedures with local anesthesia with light IV or intravenous sedation. Patients are in a state of twilight consciousness, but not paralyzed or on a respirator. While experienced facelift surgeons can work with general anesthesia with good results, I feel that the tube placed in the throat through the mouth during general anesthesia can distort the face and affect the surgical outcome. It's common after general anesthesia for patients to stay overnight at a facility with nursing care for monitoring. It's also common after general anesthesia for patients to experience nausea and vomiting. 
This all leads to prolonged and challenging recovery. In contrast, in our office, using local anesthesia with light sedation, facelift patients go home in about one to two hours after surgery and can get back to work in about a week. The level of swelling after surgery is also considerably less when comparison to patients who have had facelift surgery under general anesthesia. In my practice, patients considering facelift surgery get ample opportunity to speak freely with my medical staff as well as my administrative staff about the experience of other patients. Patients considering facelift or any other procedure get a sense of how familiar and enthusiastic the office staff is with the procedure they're considering. If you get the impression that the staff is honest, knowledgeable, and enthusiastic, it's a good sign. A facelift alone does not solve all aging issues in the area of the cheeks and jawline. When I do a consultation for facelift, I discuss other facial aging issues such as volume loss at the bone level, which cannot be addressed by facelift surgery, but rather by long-lasting fillers or facial implants. Many people wrongly assume that a facelift replaces the need to have fillers in the future. Often plastic surgeons will perform a facelift and let the patient believe they won't need fillers after surgery. Sometimes they try to address volume loss with fat grafting. I can tell you that many people have come to me after having facelift surgery with fat grafting and realized that most, if not all, the fat disappeared. Also, fat grafting is not effective in restoring volume at the bone level. In addition, the same plastic surgeon who performed the facelift will have non-physician staff members do the injectable treatments. I approach things differently. I provide my patients with a comprehensive strategy with a clear understanding of the limits of facelift surgery and the approach to bone loss using structural volumizing with long-lasting hyaluronic acid fillers placed at the bone level. I can attest to the advantage I have as a surgeon with extensive experience with facial implants such as cheek and chin implants when it comes to placing long-lasting hyaluronic acid fillers at the bone level. It's important to be comfortable with your facelift surgeon. You should have confidence in the surgeon's expertise, experience, and aesthetic style. This level of trust, in my experience, results from spending enough time in consultation and the education process before surgery. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for your question.